Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today, we are back on the Isle of Siptar, northwest of Spinner's Ridge, building a flotsam fort. This build was suggested by Robert Grant on my Stormglass Stronghold speed build, so thank you for the suggestion, Robert. As usual, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 68% off a two-year deal plus a month free when you visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout. Stick around until the end of the video to learn more about how to unlock the full potential of the internet with NordVPN. So, without further ado, let's get started. I firstly started off by building a fence foundation base plate on the edge of this cliff aiming for the 10x10 specification laid out in the suggestion. It was a bit of a tight squeeze due to the way the ridge I have chosen to build on curves downwards, but it wasn't too difficult. I wanted to create a 10x10 box fort with a small wall extending outwards by a couple of tiles protecting the front of the fort. This idea was made slightly more difficult by both the aforementioned curvature of the ridge, and also trying to get the correct amount of room between the wall and the fort. So I think the final size of the fort ended up being something like 10 by 14. In building that defensive wall I mentioned, I wanted to create something that could serve as a defensive position, but not a completely indomitable structure. Flotsam is a tier 1 material for a reason. Seeing as it's cobbled together from wrecked ships, it is of course supposed to be quite weak, and trying to create a big intimidating wall out of something like that is a futile effort, when the material I'm using is weak, so therefore it's better to go with a more understated, but still fairly capable wall design. When the wall was mostly complete, I then started on the fort itself. I mixed insulated wooden ceilings with the flotsam walls, as I wanted to work out the best way to mix flotsam with other pieces. The wooden ceilings work quite well with the flotsam walls, though I'm afraid that honestly not much else does. Whilst building the walls of the fort up, I did try to mix in lattice and insulated wooden walls to simulate damage to the walls of the fort. However, this really doesn't work at all due to the distinct colour and material differences between Flotsam and the other pieces. This is a shame as being able to simulate damage on the walls allows for more natural window features and just generally more variance, even if it just looks like the planks have fallen off. But it unfortunately looks so artificial and forced and there's so much colour difference that it really doesn't mesh well. I built the Flotsam walls two tiles high for the rest of the ground floor, 
then building stairs and capping the walls off with wooden ceilings. Next for the first floor. I built corner balconies on the back of the floor and two medium sized rooms, then extending the stairs up again for another floor. And then I built the walls of the first floor two tiles high and finished off the second floor, which is a simple, long, narrow balcony section. Next for the roof. This was quite simple, I built a pointed apex roof over the first floor, tapering it down on the sides that lead to the wall, and then a rooftop piece roof over the second floor. I also added awnings and fences when necessary around the build.
finally I added some square corner turrets to the fort walls. They looked a bit bland and quite flat so therefore I added these turrets to avoid that and it worked quite well. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the fort with lanterns, ketan lamps, and bracketed torches. Heading up onto the wall, this structure functions well as a form of defence, but the flots and pieces definitely do feel too weak to repel a large scale attack, so having this more modest wall design works quite well in keeping the fort feeling humble and grounded. Entering the floor to reach the ground floor. From this floor there is access to the meeting room on the left, the basement through the doorway under the stairs, and two workshops on the right side of the build. I've tried to decorate this build in a rustic way with a small ketan influence, with all the ketan ornaments and decorations presumably being salvaged from a ketan ship, which helps to further reinforce the use of flotsam in the fort.
heading upstairs reach the first floor where the bedrooms are found. On one side we have the fort captain's bedroom, a quite lavishly decorated room that features plenty of different storage options, along with various Kitan ornaments salvaged from the shipwreck and a personal balcony area. On the opposite side of the floor are the workers bedrooms. This is pretty much the polar opposite from the previous bedroom, as this is a much more public setting with no real expectation of privacy, save for the curtain covering every bed. Above this floor is another balcony area, providing some impressive views across the northwestern ocean. And there we have it, a flotsam fort on the Isle of Siptar, northwest of Spinners Ridge. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Robert Grant for the suggestion. I'm still a bit torn on how I feel about flotsam, but I did enjoy this build and I think the interior actually turned out really well. As I mentioned earlier, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to stay safe on the internet and ensure you can't be tracked by shady individuals, or whilst being able to access Netflix, BBC iPlayer, ITV, Hulu, HBO and more regardless of where you live, all whilst maintaining blazing fast internet speeds, NordVPN is the perfect choice for you. When you use my link or discount code you can get 68% off a 2 year deal, which comes out to $3.71 a month, an absolute bargain price for such a great service that I use almost every day. The software is a small download and it's easy to use one click and you're both connected and protected, and you have full access to the internet. Nord also has very strict policies on protecting your data, meaning you can browse in confidence. Visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt or use code eradyt at checkout to claim this huge discount and get the best VPN service available on the internet and also help me out a lot at the same time. As always, thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video. If you've enjoyed this video leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos, as usual absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. Again don't forget you can get 68% off NordVPN when you use code eradyt at checkout or you can go through my affiliate link in the description and pinned comment below. YouTube is currently my full time source of income, so if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note a thanks to our current patron Sammy, Sodialot, Randar, Dawnfox, MK Pantheon, Sergeant Swede, and Shannara. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Conan Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.